Okay. So synthetic division, uh, the skill people seem to try to avoid as much as possible, but this is not bad. It, it looks ugly, but this can really, really be done. So I hope that you'll give me a couple minutes before you decide if you're going to attempt this or not before you decide to quit. So here's this polynomial. What's significant about this is not this these values out here, but this here, this value right here, is the highest exponential value of the variable x. And this is the second highest one, so it's in descending order. And this is the third highest one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So let's just try, and we're going to try to divide this by this x minus c thing. And this is what we need to know about this x minus c, is that we're going to follow just this value right here. So the first example says that we have 2x to the fourth plus 5x cubed minus 2x minus 8. And we're going to divide that by x plus 3. So here's the template that we're going to use here. And we're going to put the c value in here. Right now, this is just fill in the blanks. So the c value is obviously what? And I heard you, and you said that the c value was 3, and I'm saying to you the c value is negative 3. And I'm wondering if you can tell by looking right in here why that's true. And here's a little clue. It's really important for us to remember that this c value right here is inside of a box, right? So if I put positive 3 in there, well, I'd get negative times a positive is a negative, and this would be negative 3, wouldn't it? So what number would have had to go into this box? So here we have this little c value here. And we, when we're finished with this piece of the formula right here, we, we're going to get out x plus 3. That's what we already know. So isn't it true that if we take negative 3 and put it in there, right? This negative sign right here, say it again, is formulaic. It's part of the formula. But this negative 3 right here is at our discretion. So we put this number in, right? So we put it into the formula. And a negative times a negative is a positive. So if it turns out that this, we see a, a positive 3 here, the, the C value must have been negative 3. All we're going to, all right, moving on. All we're going to do here, this is really very straightforward stuff. It's just fill in the blanks, isn't it? This says the coefficient of the first term. Well, the coefficient of the first term here is 2, right? So that's where this 2 comes from. Now, wait, let's go. So we go to the next one. You go, so we're at x to the fourth, x to the third. The coefficient of that is 5, isn't it? But here, in this case, is where it gets a little bit dicey. It goes, look, it goes 4, 3, 4, 3, 1. Well, we have to be able to say to ourselves, look, we do have an x to the, an x squared value. It happens to be 0x squared, isn't it? It doesn't matter what number you square. If you have a multiplier of 0 in front of it, it's going to work out to 0. So we have to assume that value in, OK? So this is our x to the coefficient of x to the fourth, our coefficient of x to the third. This is our co this right here, this 0, is our coefficient of x squared. Now we need our coefficient. Now we need our coefficient of x, which happens to be negative 2. And our and right, see if we agree with this. This is x to the 0 power here, isn't it? Right, because x to the 0 is 1, and 8 times 1 is, I'm sorry, negative 8 times 1 is negative 8. So that value here is negative 8. Everybody okay with that? All right, good. So let's move on. After this, again, formulate, and there's a little pattern that's going to happen that's going to uh, emerge here that you're going to see really quickly. First thing we're going to do is it said a sub n down here. We're just going to drop this value down. That's the, uh, kind of our first step. We're just going to drop this value down as our starting value. And the value that we drop down happened to be this 2. So here's this 2, right? And now we're going to do this. I'm not going to do this on all of them because it'll drive you nuts. But I'm going to multiply this times this and move it to there. All right? So let's see how that would look. It will look like this. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, negative 6, right? Then we're going to add these two numbers, and we're going to get negative 1, aren't we? So here's our negative 1, right? And then the same thing again. I'm going to just outline this one last time so you can get a good look at it. And what we're doing is simply this, simply this. We're going to do this times this and stack that right there, okay? All right, and of course we know that that would give us negative 3 times negative 1 is 3, isn't it? Add those two numbers together, we get 3 again. Right? Now I'm not going to diagram because it's going to get really hard on your eyeballs. But look, negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, isn't it? Negative 2 plus negative 9 is negative 11, right? going to do one more time. Same pattern as before. Negative 3 times negative 11 is positive 33. Good job. 
Add those together, and we get 25. Right? We get 25. Now, I'm not sure if it's occurring to you yet. Remember, this was the x to the fourth value. This was the x to the third value. This was the x squared value. This was the x to the first value. And this was the x to the zero value, wasn't it? And all we're going to do now for this, these are the new co this is the coefficient of the answer. These are the coefficients of the answer. So we're going to decrement the exponent by one. So this becomes not two to the, not two x to the fourth, but two x to the third. The next coefficient is negative one. So minus x not to the third, but squared. This is a positive three, so positive three x, right? Because it was the x squared. We're going to decrement that by one. And then we're going to get to this one, and this is x to the 0, it's negative 11. So, so here's our answer, p of x. p of x equals this, right? If we, divide, if we divide this function by this, we get this thing back. So you're saying, hey, hold on a second, I noticed that there's that lone 25 out there, right? And it's not our x to the 0 power because this is our x to the 0. So what the hell is this? Well, what that is, frankly, is, and it's something we've all heard of a million times, this is our remainder. This is our remainder. So we have and r equals, and the remainder is 25. So I think that's pretty good, isn't it? Um, I'm going to leave you at that. I'm going to leave you at that because what I really hope you did was this. I hope that you wrote down this pattern that if you go back in the video, wrote down, with, you know what, that's a really good idea. If you don't mind, go back to the video, write down the pattern that, that we showed up here, how to build this thing, write down this model up here. And then on the next video, we'll just go through one more. And if you do two or three of these, you're going to get really good at it. All right? I'm hearing somebody out there, I don't know, cursing under their breath or something. Take it easy. This is going to work out good, right? you got to put something into this. So I, I believe. Let's go.